Okay, it is week number 10 in the Digital Fundamentals course. We are, uh, this week we are talking about counters. So this is interesting because we are actually getting into things now, build, being able to build circuits that actually do a useful function for us. So we are dealing with counters. So important characteristics of counters that we will see. Uh, a counter will have a defined maximum number of counts that it can get to it. That it can get to, or a modulus, as we'll, we'll call it. Uh, it will be defined as either a count up or a count down type of counter. Uh, and there's also two different types as well that we'll talk about, uh, that being asynchronous or synchronous. And counters are either free running or self stopping as well. So we get to what all those things mean. Uh, and then we have learned about flip-flops already over the last two weeks. And flip-flops are the main building blocks of counters because flip-flops enable us to do small memory circuits. And we need to be able to remember where we are, where we are if we want to be able to count. Okay, so flip-flops are the main things that make up counters. So, different types of counters. The very first type we're going to talk about is the ripple counter. And a ripple counter is going to count in binary, has one flip-flop that represents each bit. So remember a flip-flop is a storage device. We basically have data coming in and then we are capable of either storing a zero or a one in here and then reading the output of that. The output we typically call Q and we also have another output which we call Q bar, which is just the opposite of that output as well. So we're going to store some data in there. We're either going to store in a 0 or a 1, and then we're able to read what that is that we have stored in there. The output of the flip-flop feeds the clock pulse of the next flip-flop in a counter. So basically what we're going to do is string together a bunch of flip-flops, and remember this has a clock coming in. I represent that by C. And we have an output called Q. And then what we do is we're able to take this output Q and connect it to the clock of the next one. And that is how we were able to count. Okay. So that enables us to be able to perform a count. This is represented over here. So let's say we have this waveform up here. This is our clock pulse. So let's say this happens every second. So this has a frequency of, uh, let's say this is one second. So if this overall period is one second, then that would be a 1 hertz signal coming in. So if that were to happen, so we, on the negative transition of this clock pulse, we store a 1 into our flip-flop. Now remember, the best way to do this, if we have a JK flip-flop, in toggle mode, then every time we clock it, it will switch states. So we go from 0 to 1, and from 1 down to 0, every time that we give this negative transition. Okay, so negative transition, negative transition, negative transition. So we are going to use this clock pulse into the clock of this first flip-flop, and that's going to cause this wave here and we can use that as our flip-flop one or our ones bit. So let's make a table over here. Let's call this flip-flop one, flip-flop two, flip-flop three. 
So right now we're going to start off with zeros. Then we get a clock pulse that's going to turn this up to a 1. So now we have a 1 in here. Flip-flop 2 and 3 are still both zeros. Okay. Now we get another clock pulse that turns this down to a 0. That's going to actually, the output of this is going to transition this next one up. So when this goes down to a 0, it's actually going to transition this up. Now what happens is we get another clock pulse, and flip-flop 1 goes back to a 1. When this drops down again, that's going to toggle this one here. And that transition, that negative transition here, now causes... this to come on. Okay. So what you will see as this carries on here We are basically getting this column here, our ones column, that transitions every clock pulse. That toggles every clock pulse. The next column over is transitioning every second clock pulse. The next column over is transitioning every fourth clock pulse. Okay, so that's basically what these waves represent here because the Q, so we're using the clock as the feeding the clock of the first one here. We're using the Q of this feeding our clock here. And we're using the Q of this one, feeding our clock here. Okay, and that is how we create this type of behavior here. And basically what we're generating by this is a table that is basically counting in binary. Okay, so that is essentially how a ripple counter works. So demonstrate it there. So how do we actually wire this up? So you will see here, I'm going to go to highlighter mode here, bring up my highlighter. So we have our 1 hertz clock feeds into the clock here. Then we have our Q feeds into the clock of the second one, our Q of the second one feeds into the clock of the next one, our Q of the next one, feeds into the clock of the next one, and you can keep on going like this over and over and over again to build up as many bits as you want. The other things we'll notice here as well, uh, connected to 5 volts, we've got a whole bunch of things connected to 5 volts. J and K both held at 5 volts. Clear and preset all held at 5 volts. And by doing that, that basically puts this JK flip-flop in toggle mode. And you'll see that on each of these flip-flops. That's how these are connected. So this is basically putting this in toggle mode. And then the final thing we have here is that we are also reading the outputs of these as well, we are taking the output over to a bit one LED, going over here to the bit two LED, the Q 
queue here also goes to the bit 3 LED, and the queue here goes to our bit 4 LED to basically be able to show us the data that is stored in here, and that produces our 4 bit number over here. Okay, so that is the functioning of the ripple up counter. Notice here as well this little symbol. That symbol represents our 1 hertz clock input signal. Now where does that come from? So last uh, last week, Lab B, the A-stable multivibrator, we created a flashing signal in that lab. So that was part B of the lab. So you'll remember that we did that. Part B, so very simple circuit. It was the 14 chip with one resistor and one capacitor. And we were able to produce this signal here, which flashed this LED on and off at a set frequency. And we could vary that frequency depending on the value of this resistor. Okay, so we could alter that resistor and change how fast the LED flashed. So we can use this circuit again as our clock input signal. Okay, so this is demonstrated in the lab videos. So you'll see the Darren Holmes videos, resistor, capacitor, chip, and then coming over here, he's just got that LED set up to monitor. You'll see that flashing as it goes. So this basically flashes, and then we're just feeding off of there to go into our counter circuit there as our clock signal. Okay, so this is the ripple up counter. So we'll build this circuit. This is part A of the lab for this week. We'll build this circuit and then fill in this table. It will look like this on your board. And it looks like this very much in Tinkercad as well. And now we will demonstrate in Tinkercad. All right, this is the Tinkercad for the ripple count up. So we will see a couple important things about this. The very first thing we're going to see, uh, you will notice that this circuit right here on the left-hand side of my board is basically part B from the lab last week on multivibrator. So this is the uh, A-stable multivibrator. So this is basically our flashing circuit. So we've got capacitor, resistor, and the uh, hysteresis uh, 14 inverter chip. And what you will see here, uh, when we run this, we basically get a flashing output from it. So our LED flashes. And if you remember, we can control the speed of that flash by varying the value of this resistance. So less resistance, we get a faster flash. There's a formula that calculates that. Or a greater resistance, we get a slower flash. Okay, so let's go with the four kilo ohm resistor and see where that puts us. The other thing we'll do here is we'll just put the oscilloscope on this. Let's bring in an oscilloscope. We'll put that here. Go so for our positive. We'll just put that on the output here. Negative of the oscilloscope will just tie to the, the ground or the negative of the system. It's black, we'll call this orange, just to match the wires that it's attached to. Let's actually watch this and we'll try to see what the actual frequency and period of the uh, of our output is here. Let's say, let's call this one second per division. Or sorry, 
Let's call it 0.5 seconds per division on the oscilloscope. Let's see what kind of a waveform we actually get here. So this will help us actually measure the frequency. We could calculate this as well, but this is what the oscilloscope is for. So 0.5 seconds per division. So that's about a square per. So basically two squares creates one period of the wave. So that is about a one second. So that's about a one hertz. So about four kilo ohms gives you about one hertz. This was the 470 picofarad or microfarads. Uh, four kilohertz. That generates about a one hertz output. Okay, so that is the clock signal that we will use for these circuits. Or it is one possible clock signal we could use. I'll show you how to do something else in a little bit. So I'll just leave that running. Another thing that I have noticed, uh, I was using Firefox as my browser. I did some reading online, uh, and they suggested trying some different browsers. Today I'm running Chrome, and what I'm seeing is I don't get the lag where it switches into the counting in milliseconds uh, that I was getting before when I was using Firefox. So you might want to try, if you're using Firefox, you might want to try Chrome, you might get better results for, it might not be as laggy. Uh, and when you do these circuits, that's going to make a difference. So what we've got here today, so this is the ripple up counter. So we basically have two flip-flops, or two flip-flop chips, which gives us a total of four flip-flops because there's two flip-flops in each of these chips. So we have a lot of stuff connected to the uh, 5 volts, just tied to the 5 volts. So we have the reset, K, the power, the second reset, J, that is K over there, that's J right there. We've got the ground connected to the ground. So basically J and K are connected to... Uh, 5 volts, so those are basically held at a 1. So when we do that, that puts us into toggle mode. So these flip-flops are basically set to toggle mode. So basically every time that we give it a clock signal, it will switch states. Now this makes these effective for counting. And we can use these to make our ripple counter. So we've got two flip-flops here, two flip-flops here. That's a total of four flip-flops all together. We've got them connected as they're shown in part A of the lab, where the output, sorry, this is connected in the ripple down counter right now. I'm just going to do a quick pause on my video. Okay, so we're back. Uh, so I had to rewire, just flip some wires around to put this back in the counting up mode. So as you can see here, we have the output of each flip-flop goes over to an LED. So that is flip-flop 1, basically flip-flop 2. This would be flip-flop 3. This would be flip-flop 4 outputs. So these are all lining up there. So that's my basically my bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, bit 3 of my number. And then what we do is we connect that output, like we do in the ripple counter, the output off of flip-flop 1 is going to go to the clock signal of flip-flop 2. The output of flip-flop 2 goes to the clock signal of flip-flop 3. The output of flip-flop 3 goes to the clock signal of flip-flop 4. And that is basically how we set up that counting pattern. And then what we will see here is you'll see this is basically counting in a binary number. So this is about to roll over that. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
and then back to zero again. It'll keep on rolling around like that. Okay, so that is the ripple up counter. So using four different flip-flops to drive a four-bit count. Now a couple other things that I've done here. I have gone and because we know how to do this, because we did it in a previous lab, I connected the outputs of this binary output here. I have this connected to a decoder and I'm actually decoding that signal and displaying the output on a seven segment display as well. So you'll see that this number here is matching what we've done here. So this is basically a chunk of the lab from the uh, encoding decoding week to be able to display 0, 1, 2. Now this will display up until 9. You'll see once this hits 9 it doesn't have an equivalency for 10 through 15. It just goes blank after that. So there's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It'll go back to 0 now and then go with 1, 2 and all the way through like that. So this is the ripple up counter. So we're going to make a couple modifications here now to the ripple up counter. So we've got approximately a 1 hertz signal there going in, so one cycle per second. We're going to use something else today called the function generator. So this is it right here. We're going to bring this in. And this we use in the lab sometimes as well. And this is basically capable of producing various waveforms that we can use to test our circuits with as well. So we've basically created a 1 hertz wave coming off of this circuit here. Well, what we're going to do now, let's actually break this connection here. Uh, and we'll actually break this connection here. And instead, we're going to use this function generator. So we'll tie this negative to negative of our system. That's up there. Make that a black wire. And we'll put an orange wire here. Let's connect this into here. And instead of getting that waveform off of our circuit here, we're going to generate it off of here. So let's run, use that to run our, our clock signal now instead. So this is basically disconnected now from our system. And now we are running off of this function generator. So let's look at the properties of this. We are going to run 1 hertz, 5 volts, that's good. We're going to do a square wave. We can do all these different forms. We're going to run a square wave like this. And let's start our simulation. And you'll see that we are running now a perfectly 1 hertz waveform here. Pretty much exactly the same as we were generating off of here, except we can dial in exactly one hertz off of here. Okay, and again, this is just this is just counting now. Nine, ten. Now, much like we were adjusting the resistance here, we could just. If we want to go faster, we can go faster. We can't go down to 
It's really starting to bog down the system now. But I should be able to uh, see a different waveform on the oscilloscope. And this clock should be running faster now. Just too much going on. Take it back to one hertz. I'm basically demonstrating here that we can use the function generator as a replacement for this circuitry here. And some of the circuits we're going to be doing coming up, uh, we're going to use a lot of space on the board, so the function generator is probably easier to set up than, than uh, to build this each time. So we can, it, is, it will be acceptable to use the function generator instead of building this circuit from this point on. All right, so back into it. We are going to now talk about the ripple count down. Now, the difference between the ripple count up and the ripple count down is almost the identical circuit. The only difference is, if you notice with the ripple up, highlighter here, Ripple up. We take the Q of 1 and we run that into the clock of the next one. With the ripple down, what we're doing is we're taking the Q bar of the previous flip-flop and we're connecting that to the clock of the next flip-flop. Everything else is the same. That is the only difference. So we basically check to see if in the up, grab a pen here. So if the, if the previous bit equals a one, Then toggle with the down. It's basically, if the previous bit is equal to zero, then you do a toggle. And if we think about that in terms of a uh, A table if we're counting backwards so if we're going off this way direction here I think about what I'm doing here if your previous bit is a so on the way up if this is a one you toggle. If this is a one, you're going to toggle. If this is a one, you're going to toggle. On the countdown, it's just the opposite. If you are a zero, you're going to change. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to do this again here. Oh, grab my eraser. Can't grab the eraser. I have to look over top of the camera. Grab my eraser. So we want to say that if the If the previous bit, so this is our toggle point here, we are looking at the previous bit. If it is a zero, then we change. If it is a zero, then we change. When we count backwards, that's what we're looking for. So 
on the way up. A 1 indicate transition on the previous bit. So the same here. First time we get a 1, we get a transition. On the way down, that's when we get a 0, when we get the transition. Okay? So that is the difference between the ripple up, ripple count up, and ripple count down. So let's demonstrate that in Tinkercad. All right, this one is the ripple down counter. So almost identical to the ripple up counter. We run this again. Remember this one counted from zero. One, two, three, up like that. I'm going to eliminate a couple things out of here. I'm going to take out the oscilloscopes. I think the oscilloscope slows things down a bit. I think can't process as fast with the oscilloscope running. Okay, so this is counting up. So we want to count down. So the difference between the count up and the count down is what runs the clock signal on the next flip-flop. So right now, we say clock the next flip-flop if you have your output on the previous flip-flop on. So for the countdown, the difference is we're going to say clock the next flip-flop if the output is not on. So we're going to connect the clock signal. Instead of clock signal for flip-flop 2, Instead of being connected to the output of flip-flop 1, we're going to connect it to the Q bar of flip-flop 1. So same thing with clock of flip-flop 3 is going to connect to Q bar of flip-flop 2. And clock of flip-flop 4, connect to Q bar of flip-flop 3. So basically just moving three wires like that, it's going to change the behavior of this counter from counting up, counting down. So let's watch this run. So now what happens? We start at zero. Three, two, one, zero. Done something wrong here. Well, I put that on K2 instead of inverted input 2. Let's try putting things on the right place. Let's try this again. go from zero. Now we're at 16. Or four, sorry, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Now I'll actually start showing up here as 9, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. And we go to zero. And now we roll back around to 15 after this. And there's 15. Okay, so this is the countdown ripple timer. Okay, so the only difference between count up and count down, what drives the clock signal of the next flip-flop on the count up, it is the output, so Q of the previous flip-flop, 
on the countdown, it is Q bar on the previous flip-flop. 